In the following video, we're going to look through and discuss the details surrounding the, this, the clone status for Agent Unreachable. Agent Unreachable is probably one of the most common issues and errors that can occur in a Horizon environment. And unfortunately, it can occur for, for multiple different reasons. And in some cases, it's not always caused by, by a Horizon issue. Because Horizon sits on top of Virtual Center, which has ESXi hosts and networking and storage and everything configured, Horizon is always dependent on a, a solid and functionally working infrastructure. And what I mean by that is, if you have a problem with an ESXi host, if you have a problem with your networking, if there's an issue with IP addresses or ports, uh, your storage, your data store has been full, any of these issues, they're going to have a problem that's going to be seen in Horizon, or they're going to cause a problem that, that'll be seen in Horizon, I should say. So it's very important that when we come across issues, we, we take a step back and we look and see where these issues could be coming from, whether they are Horizon specific, or potentially are they infrastructure based. And what I mean by that is, are they caused by Virtual Center or the underlying infrastructure? But first, let's have a look at the Horizon admin page. Now I'm on the dashboard page at the moment and in the right hand side you can see I have under my vCenter VMs, I have a machine showing up as problem machine. So there's only one entry. So what I'm gonna do is expand this and I can see that I actually have a agent unreachable machine. I'm now gonna click on machines under resources and this shows me all of the machines that I have in my environment. Now, as this is a test environment, I've only got a single pool and two machines available. And you can see that my LC pool one machine has a status of agent unreachable. If I click this, I can see agent unreachable, paired and secured, uh, configured by the SACON server, att attempted theft by. Nothing really of value here. It's, it's a pretty much a generic message that we see quite often and isn't anything that we can we can immediately say ah this is the problem so we need to do a little bit of investigation one of the things that you're going to have to check is always that your ntp server is working accordingly now this is a test environment and mine is set up accordingly so i'm not going to go through this but it's one of the first things you need to check because if your ntp is out of sync what can happen then is, is you might be sending a request in the past, you might be resending a, uh, sending a request in the future, responses might be coming back in the past or the future. And if something is in the past, maybe it's not been accepted. If something's in the future, maybe there's a delay. So you always wanna make sure that you're running off the same NTP server settings across your whole environment. The next thing to check would be your network connectivity. So what I'm gonna do here now is I'm just gonna pop open a command prompt and I'm going to try to ping LC pool one. And we can see I'm, I'm not getting a response here. I'm getting a timeout. And just, just for curiosity's sake, I'm going to kill this and I'm going to see do I get the same issue with LC pool two? And we can see that I get responses immediately. So straight away, I can now say that I have a, a particular issue with one machine. Now that that might sound a little bit obvious, but what I mean by that is I can now look at what differences there are between LC pool two and LC pool one. So if I come to my virtual center, I'm just gonna log in. What we now need to check is, firstly, the hosts that they reside on. So if I come to my hosts and clusters look, so I'm gonna come up and I'm gonna firstly start with ESXi1. So if I click on ESXi1 and I go to my VMs, I can see LC, LC pool two is available, but also my composer server is on this machine and it's also powered on at the moment. So again, just to verify, I'm gonna ping SA Comp server dot vclass dot local, and I get a response off this. So 
this quick little check here tells me that there's not a network connectivity issue for the machines residing on ASXi host 01. I'm now going to have a look at ASXi host 2. And I can see my LC pool 1 machine is here, but my Win 10 gold image, so this was the image I used to build up my, my pool, this is also present here and it's powered on. So similarly, I'm going to try to ping Win 10 gold. And I'll just leave it at that. And interestingly, I actually get a ping response for this machine. So this then allows me to reduce my scope a little bit more. I now know that ESXiO2 has machines that I have network connectivity on and that I can access and has one particular machine that I can't access. So now my next step would be to look at LC pool 01. Or sorry, LC pool 1. I look at the summary page and I can see that it's up and running, tools are installed, it has a DNS name, but I can see that there's no IP address here. I can see the host it's residing on, but there isn't an IP address present. If I look at LC pool 2, I can see that there is an IP address present. So straight away, I now know that there's a problem here and I need to understand and figure out why I'm not getting an IP address. Now, this could be for multiple reasons. Maybe we've completely exhausted the list of IPs for that particular pool. But in that, if, if that was the scenario, I'd expect to see a, a 169.254 IP address. So where my thought process would now go to is the configuration of this machine. And what we see quite regularly with cases is that the person who's in charge of the Horizon environment may not also be the person who's in charge of the virtual center environment. And in fact, what, we, what we've started to see a lot lately is that we have a specialist for the database, specialist for storage, a specialist for networking, specialist for aspects of virtual center, a specialist for the maybe desktop administration side of Horizon, but also a specialist for the infrastructure side of Horizon. So we've got multiple people in a single pot working on the same environment and it's a very common issue but sometimes somebody from one group does something on machines they haven't told everyone else what's going on and that's where some of the issues can occur and in all honesty it's quite common that that's where issues occur from so firstly i'm just going to have a quick look at lc pool 2 first because I know this machine works and it's accessible and the status is available. So I'm just gonna right click and go to edit settings. Not planning to change anything here, but I just wanna have a look to see what's jumping out. So two CPU, four gig of RAM. I can see I've got hard disks with memory installed. I'm using the LSI Logic SCSI controllers and I'm using the uh, PGSA production network adapter. And there's nothing else jumping out at me there that I need to take note of. Um, and that's just on the hardware. That's all I want to check. So I'm going to cancel this. So I didn't make any changes. So if I don't make changes, I always press cancel. And if I ever make a change that I don't want to take effect, I always press cancel. I'm going to do the same now on LC pool one. And if I look here, two CPU, four gig of RAM, hard disks, LSI logic, I'm using the same network adapter, but the connected checkbox isn't checked. So this is why I'm not seeing an IP address. And because I'm not seeing an IP address, this is why the agent status is unreachable. So I'm gonna just enable this checkbox, press okay. And I'll see that my configuration of the virtual machine is taking place. And if I click on LC pool one, Gonna give it a couple of minutes here. But what I should see quite soon is that an IP address is going to appear on this machine. And yeah, we can see that now. So the 172.2011.201 IP address is now available. If I come back to my command prompt, sorry, I'm just gonna run back and run the ping command on LC pool one. I now get a reply. So perfect, I know this is working. And if I come into my Horizon admin console, and if I refresh, 
I can now see that DLC pool one machine is available again. So this was just one particular example of how the agent unreachable status can occur. There are multiple other ways that you can end up in this status, but it's always important to take a step back and look at the wider situation. If it's a single machine in a pool of machines where everything else is available, then potentially there's an issue just with that machine. If it's all of the pool, all of the machines in the pool, well then we need to look at everything from a wider perspective. Where do those VMs reside? Are they all on a single host? Are they on multiple hosts? Are they all on the same data store? You need to look at things from a much wider perspective when you're looking at these issues. They're rarely tied to a single problem. It's always, there's always a reason and it's always, most of the time, sorry, I shouldn't say always, it's most of the time it's been affected by something else that's happened in the underlying infrastructure. So in that sense, there was a, a checkbox had been deselected. You know, we could have exhausted IP addresses. We may have maxed out our resources on a host. These are the kind of things that we need to check. And it's important why it's important to make sure that there's constant communication between all of the people working on the whole infrastructure, not just the horizon side, but from vSphere to data stores and across the board. This completes this demo. Thank you.